proximity this morning. Welcome. If you're joining us online, welcome to you. Um, boy, we had a lot of registrations. I think we're going to have a full house uh, this morning or close to full house. So um, we uh, want to welcome all of our visitors, those who are coming for the first time, those we haven't seen for a little while as well. Welcome back. Good to have you uh, with us. Going to invite you to stand, if you would. And uh, we are going to go ahead and pray. And then our worship is uh, via video today. So sing along with our team uh, as they lead us. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that we can come into this place. We thank you for our, our brothers and sisters in Christ, that we are a family. And when we come together, uh, you as our Father, Father God, you are here to meet with us, to uh, stretch us, to grow us as your children. So may we hear your voice, and as we worship you, may you be pleased today uh, as you hear our hearts. And uh, God, would you just, in each of our lives today, would you just stretch us a bit? Show us an area where we can take a next step and uh, draw nearer to you uh, one step today. We pray it in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, let's worship along with the team. They're going to lead us here via video.
Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning again that we can gather here and that we can sing and declare your worth, your glory, the beauty of who you are, God. That uh, I just think this morning of that scripture, two or three are gathered, there you are in our midst. And we thank you for the privilege of gathering. Over the past year, we've maybe taken that for granted, but we are privileged today, whether we're gathering here or online, for the joy that we have in coming together with our common goal of loving you and serving you, Jesus. It's, it really is a joy to be able to do that today. Thank you today for this family, this church family that is here, that today as we celebrate, we get to just sort of feed off of the, the joy and, 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 and the um, gratitude that we have in our hearts for one another and for what you have done for us. So we give you praise today, Jesus, and we pray your blessing now as we look to your word, as we dig in, as we have truth that uh, <laughs> your word says it, it divides from our thoughts and our attitudes and it, it helps us grow, that it would do that this morning, each of our hearts and lives. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, amen, amen. amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Boy, it just it feels so good in here to see you all, or, or it's growing and, and coming along, and uh, what have I got here, some sort of message button, but uh, hopefully everything is good there online. Uh, I see that I'm there, so hopefully that uh, you can see me online as well. Um, we want to give you a couple of announcements. This time of year, uh, you may be used to that we have the boxes come out for our Operation Christmas Child. So they are going to be here with us next Sunday, and on your way out next Sunday, you're welcome to take one of the shoe boxes. They come back on the same, uh, that Sunday around Remembrance Day, we'll let you know. But you're welcome to actually take the physical box and fill it again this year, and bring it back on that Sunday. However, there is also this opportunity, which is an online 
uh, put together a box. So you can go online. This link will be live either through our website or through our Facebook page uh, later today or tomorrow. And you go on and basically you can just click on pack an online shoe box. Uh, I've set it up here. I set a goal for us of 100 shoe boxes uh, and tried to make this as easy as possible for you. You didn't even have to go to Walmart or the dollar store this year, right? You just jump online and click, click, click and make a donation. Uh, and this is our month of giving, so we want to, um, we've uh, taken Thanksgiving and made it a whole month of giving. But this is a great way for us to support uh, children in impoverished areas, make sure they have something this Christmas. And these are essential needs, it's not just trinkets, but you'll see as you go through, if you uh, check this out, there are things that they put in every box that these children can use. And so I'd encourage you to check that out, again, online at Proximity Church or our Facebook page. Now, also, Ross has been doing some craft work. This is Ross McPherson. <laughs> no, he's not doing this. But uh, he is through Heart for Africa. Uh, he has, uh, I think it's, I don't know, is it 50? Or is Ross here? I think he's got about 50 of these available. Uh, I don't know how many he's got with him today, but it's a Christmas ornament. It's made by the um, people at Heart for Africa, uh, who we support through mission. And uh, you can support Ross, and uh, I think, I want to say, I hope I don't give a discounted price here. 16, is that right? Does anyone else know I'm right? $16, Christmas ornament, and 100% of these proceeds go right to Heart for Africa. So he has a limited supply. Don't tackle him, because we're not allowed to touch each other, but uh, see him somewhere along the way, and he's got a limited supply in him today, or let him know you'd like one. And uh, he has these, um, and they'll, the money will go straight to Heart for Africa, our missions partner. Um, if you'd like to just give to missions or give to Proximity Church, you can do that by going to our website. And you're probably so used to this page by now with the arrow. Uh, thank you for doing that online. You've been so faithful, and we're able to um, give to missions, to be honest, as we never have before. We have started to really, really focus as a church on mission, so much so that I can announce to you we're putting together a missions team, a missions committee, who is going to be looking after, I'm talking to those people one at a time, I think I've got all three covered now, um, and we're going to be pulling them together by the end of this year so that by January we'll be able to bring you missions reports every month through this team, uh, our missions initiatives, we'll go through them, and they'll, they'll be able to help us really get focused in that way. So we're excited, in the midst of COVID, in the midst of a crazy time, uh, we are staying on mission, and we want to do that even more than uh, we have up to this point. All right, speaking of missions, kids are often on mission, and we have a whole pile of them today. So you can uh, just go with Marsha and Kitty out the back door here, and uh, she has some helpers and a great lesson for you all. All right, there they go. Bless you guys as you uh, are into your class. All right, so hopefully everyone had a great Thanksgiving uh, weekend. You got some turkey. Uh, we tried a frozen turkey this year, and whatever we did, we did something wrong. It decided to stay pretty much frozen, uh, so that was kind of a weird thing. Uh, we had microwave turkey. Um, every, I, I will kind of boast a little bit on uh, mom and dad fortune because every year for the last like 10 years, they have bathed the turkey in butter and bacon for us. And so we had been spoiled. This year they were away and so it was, it was microwave turkey. Anyway, I think we need a Thanksgiving redo. I'm just putting that out there for my family, you know, on this one. Um, but hopefully you had a great Thanksgiving. We have taken this, the month of October, and we wanted to emphasize the giving portion. That's why you can see here uh, well, both thanks and giving. But we wanted to talk about how we can be giving and we can be on mission all this month. So uh, every Sunday I'm trying to bring to you a way in which we can give. Uh, this Sunday we're going to talk about forgiveness. And we, we're going to emphasize forgiveness and especially um, the, that portion of giving. How we've been forgiven and how we in turn uh, are called to give or to forgive others. So uh, we're going to pray and then we're going to dive right into Colossians 3. That's going to be our text this morning. Lord, again, we thank you for your word today. And I thank you for the privilege that I have to be able to stand here and declare to preach your word online and in person. I pray now that as we open your word together, which is life, it's, it, it brings life into our soul, it gives us focus and meaning. That in, in this moment, that you would take these words of mine and what I've studied and the word of God that has been given to us. And may it penetrate our hearts. May we truly take a step this week to forgive and to be on mission with you in giving to others. 
in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, Colossians 3, I'm going to read through these verses from verse 12 to 17. And then I want to pull out, just uh, have some fun at looking at three specific uh, pieces that we are given here through God's word that we can practice. And then we'll talk about thanks as well. Verse 12, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Verse 13, bear with one another and forgive one another. If any one of you have, have a, has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. I'll tell you what, there's a whole sermon just in these words. <laughs> forgive as the Lord forgave you. We're going to touch on it, but I've been thinking this week we could just dive into a series probably on that. Verse 14, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And verse 17 kind of covers all of it. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. It's a great and powerful passage there And I wanted to just break it into three pieces. The first piece that I see right away that's very clear here in verse 12 is this. And I've just entitled this first point, dressing like Jesus. Um, not, I'm not talking about a robe or dressing in Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern garb of ancient days. Uh, but how can we be people who are clothed in humility, compassion, kindness, gentleness, and patience? Well, we dress like Jesus. If we are people who want to be effective in this world, then the way that we are effective is by putting on Christ. You know, the Word of God says that if we are Christians, we are made new. The old is gone, the new is come. And we put off the old self with its desires, and we put on the new self, which is Christ. And we are hidden in Him. We are clothed, then the Word of God says, clothed with a robe of righteousness. You know what that means is that I could never attain to perfection. Jesus lived a sinless, perfect life, and through the cross, gives that to me as a gift, and I get to put that on. Covers my sin, forgives my sin, and now I have this amazing um, garment that I am seen pure, justified, and forgiven before God the Father. Aren't you thankful for that today? What an amazing robe of righteousness purchased for you. Well, and in that same picture, when we look at dressing like Jesus, these, these um, character traits that are, that are put in here to clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Have you seen a lot of those in the last year, year and a half? <laughs> not so much, eh? We're not so compassionate to one another anymore. We're not so kind anymore. We, we get frustrated easily, especially online. People are the cancel culture, right? Attacking one another. We're judging one another. We're cutting people off. There's not a lot of humility. We think we have all the answers. There's not a lot of gentleness. We're, we're quick to judge and quick to make decisions. And there's certainly, I think this last one is very lacking, patience. Um, something that I think we all work on. But yet we're told through God's word, we're to clothe ourselves in these things. So I researched this word a little bit. What does that mean to clothe ourselves? The Greek word is endio, and it means this. It's the sense of sinking, I've highlighted it for you, sinking into a garment. Sinking into a garment. Or here, to invest with clothing. Some of you got really excited that I just said you could go shopping and make an investment, right? Yeah, <laughs> Lori, happy birthday, by the way, to Lori today. Yay! She put her hands up there. So you have a right to go shopping. Where's Ross? I'm getting back. Yeah, yeah. He's like, no. Nope. Yeah, preach it. We are told here to invest with clothing. And some of us have made big investments and we have sunk into our clothing. Um, when we look at this, though, the picture that we have of this is that these are things that we, when we look at now the clothing that the Bible is talking about, that we are to find ourselves sinking deeper, deeper, deeper into compassion deeper into kindness, to invest, see that there? To invest in these things, to make sure that what I'm investing in is compassionate, what I'm investing in is kind, 
and I'm investing in being patient, I'm investing in being gentle. So that word, clothe yourself, speaks of these kinds of things. And I want to sink deeper and deeper into God's love, deeper and deeper into uh, being compassionate and being kind. In a world, right, that's going the opposite way. In a world that's saying, no, you get your own dog-eat-dog world. Just tell people what's what. Cancel them. Close them off. Get less and less friends, right? Division is the plan of the enemy. Can I make that clear today? The, the, the enemy loves nothing better than to a house divided can't stand. He wants to divide. God is a God who wants to unite. God is a God who wants us to be clothed as he is clothed. It's funny when you think about clothing, too, and I'm not going to do a whole bunch of dress up today, but my favorite show growing up online, people was dress up, Mr. Dress up. And some of you are just like, what is that? But it was a great show. Anyway, uh, if I start to, and I won't put all of these things on, but if I start to dress up today, these are, this is my gear, by the way. I like to think because I live in the country. I, I might mess up my headset here. Tina, hopefully not. But if I put this on, can you see that online? Whoa, what a mask, eh? This is my chainsaw helmet. I don't know why I'm yelling. But anyway, uh, this is my chainsaw helmet with earmuffs. Well, that's why it's good earmuffs. And if I put that on, my kids know right away he's going to cut down some trees, right? Or at least pretend that I'm going to cut down some trees, right? I'll put that on and my kids will take pictures out the window and put it on Instagram. Look at my dad. He thinks he's a lumberjack, right? But you put something on and it identifies what you're about, what you're going to go do. Um, for a while, some of you remember about two years ago, this one will definitely mess up my hair. <laughs> yeah, somebody didn't get that. But uh, this is a goalie helmet, and if I were to put that on, you'd kind of identify, okay, he's gone from cutting down trees to um, using his goalie stick to cut down players. <laughs> you know, like, uh, you put that on, and it identifies that you're going to play a game somewhere and defend a net somewhere. And so we get it. Clothing and articles of clothing display some different things. I even found, look at this, I could probably sell this today, but I found an old Tim Hortons visor. Hello, may I take your order? <laughs> that should be a screenshot right there. Yeah, roll up the rim to win. There it is, you know. But we, we can easily, you and I, subconsciously, as we see people dressed a certain way, if we see people wearing certain things, we immediately associate those things with what that person's doing, with what activity they're up to. Do you know, in the Word of God, when we look at the Word of God, we are called to walk in patience and kindness and gentleness and these things because as people see us clothed that way, they will associate us with our Lord and Savior who walk that way, who talk that way, who operated in this way. The Word of God even clarifies that for us in Philippians 2. Look at this 5 and 8. It's not our text, but I want to wrap it in here. That in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, he didn't consider Consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Look at verse 7. He made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. He made himself and took on the nature of a servant. That's our Lord and Savior. That everywhere he walked, he was there to serve. He was there to help. Walking in patience and kindness and gentleness. This is what we are called to do. And that my prayer is always, Lord, is I'm walking in this situation. May people see something different about me. Maybe they won't know what it is. Maybe they'll just discern there's something different there. And hopefully my reaction and the way I'm clothed represents his kindness. Not mine. Uh, his gentleness, not mine. His mercy and ultimately His forgiveness, not mine. So that's the goal, right? That every day we say, Lord, clothe me today in patience. Clothe me in kindness and compassion. Help me to think as you would and not the way this world wants me to. So how are you clothed today? How are you, how are you clothed this week? Did you operate in some things that today you'd be a little ashamed of and say, well, no, I need to shift gears. I need to sink into. I need to invest in, clothe myself and the very things that Jesus did in making himself nothing and serving us. So that, that's really number one. If we're going to move in thanksgiving and giving to people, we've got to clothe ourselves with Christ and the way that Jesus did. Here's the next one. We also need to be forgiving people like Jesus. And this is that one that's a whole other sermon. But um, I want to touch on it here because it's right in our text. It says, bear with each other, forgive one another. And then it says, forgive 
as the Lord forgave you. And I want you just for a moment to think about all of the things in your life that if you today have become a Christian, the word of God says there is therefore, Romans 8, 1, no condemnation for you. And that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So think for a moment about all of the sin, the pile, the heap of sin that he's forgiven you of, right? We all know ourselves so well. You know, if I were to say today, well, I, I got onto one of your uh, websites or I hacked the computer and I have all of your past sins up here. Let's just go through them together. We'd all be like, no, right? You'd be running up here and trying to cover the screen or unplug some things. None of us want those because we all know how much we failed. Well, and then the word of God says, well, then bear with each other. Then be forgiving one another, knowing how far we've fallen. Forgive actually the way the Lord forgave you. I tell you, folks, I've been forgiven so much. And every day and every week and every moment, I'm forgiven more and more and more. That needs to impact you today. Where you know I'm going to need his forgiveness probably more this coming week than I did last week. Every week is I need him more. I need him more. I need him more than I did the last week. And I think about this. I looked up this word for us. What does it mean to bear with? You're going to like this. I don't know I can pronounce this right, but anikomai. To hold oneself up against, or like this, to put up with. <laughs> Some of you are like, what does that mean, bear with? It means you've got to put up with us, okay? Whether you like it or not today, Christians. We've got to put up with one another. Well, I thought, well, couldn't I just cancel people off? I'm not their friend anymore on Facebook. They put some bad things. Well, if, if they're a Christian, they might hold some views a little different than you. But you're told to bear them. You're told to put up with them. But they don't like things the same way that I like things. And my way is the right way. We all believe that, right? Have your burger the right way right away. And I bet you none of us eat our burgers the same way or even from the same restaurants. Most of you are like, yeah, it's probably true, you know. Funny, sometimes we'll go through the drive-thru and we're ordering burgers. And my family even orders burgers all differently. Sometimes one of my members of my family will name left out of this because I'll be in trouble. But will tell everything they don't want on the burger rather than what they do want on the burger. And I don't understand that process even. They're not asking what you don't want on the burger. They want to know what you do want on the burger, you know. And they'll start and go through everything they don't want. And we all have different preferences. Our theology is going to be a little bit here and there. We can't, the Bible says we only see in part. We know in part. So we are told that we are to forgive one another. We're to bear one another. Look at this part here where it says, hold oneself up against. That's kind of that picture if you watch an old war movie where the two guys, the two military guys, will sit in that foxhole or in that, uh, that place of protection. And they'll lean up against each other to hold each other up and keep each other uh, ready. Or fighters who will fight back to back. We're gonna hold each other up and bear with one another, keeping each other going. Folks, this is what we're called to do. That we're to bear one another, fight for one another. It's not that we're you know, um, gonna come in and, and say, well, that person seems to be really struggling in this area. Let's just cut them off so we can move ahead. That's not what Jesus calls us to. He says, you need to bear with that person. You need to forgive that person. You need to have grace with that person. As a matter of fact, the Word of God says if you are the mature brother, you need to have grace. And even though you have liberty, you need to say, I'm not going to exercise my liberty because my weaker brother is growing. And I want them to grow and not be a hindrance to them. So we aren't called just to clothe ourselves as Jesus, but also to put up with one another. Yeah, that's part of what we're called to. Well, Pastor Jay, does that mean I just ignore when people do things that get on my nerves? No, you still speak the truth in love. Don't make every issue an issue. You know, we all have those situations where somebody wants to make every single issue an issue. And my way is not just our way, but the right way. We, we need to have some grace, have some room, and hold one another up. I think many of you can witness to this and say, this church family... We've been together for more than just a four years as proximity, but beyond that, many of you could witness today if we had a testimony time and say thank you to this church family for the prayers. Thank you for holding me up. I thank you for them, you know, just being there at a time when I couldn't make it through the next week. And many of us today would say, yep, yeah, I witnessed that. I know that some of you, as I'm just glancing over faces here, nodding heads and saying, yep. Yeah. Well, that's us bearing one another. That's us caring enough to show that care through uh, our love for one another. And then that brings us to love. We don't get to love easily, I think. Love, um, we'll say, 
well, I don't have to like you, but I have to love you. <laughs> right? That's, funny enough, in the Christian world, say, I don't have to like them, but I guess I have to love them. Well, yeah, I think you should work on both of those pieces. You know, Learn to like people. Uh, we're going to be together forever in eternity, right? So if you, you know, there's not one side of heaven where you can go to that side of heaven and go, Jesus, thanks for my mansion, but can you move it here because I don't like them. I know, I know I'm supposed to love them, but we just don't like each other. You know, like We need to learn to like each other. Appreciate the differences. If we were all the same, how boring would that be? We'd all be bald like me, and we'd all be fighting to preach. So I thought I was a preacher. I, I'm a preacher. Like, we all need to be different. God made us all different. We need to appreciate some of those differences. We're all quirky. We all have differences. But, folks, we are called to love over all these things. Put on love. What does love do? Look, this is so important for today's world. It brings us together in perfect unity. In a world where even this week in Ontario, i got to be careful because it goes onto YouTube, and if I say certain words, the, the, believe it or not, the video gets flagged. But, you know, there are certain things that we're supposed to do, and if we don't do them, we might lose our job. You get the idea, right? That's very real today. And some of us are on one side, and others are on another, and we're divided, and we don't know what to do here. Hear me, the devil would love nothing more for us to get all wrapped up in that, and all worried about that, and off mission. What's God calling us to do? Love one another. Walk in unity. Bear one another. Someone else has... Listen, the Spirit of God has given me convictions that He might not give to you. He may say to me, look, at, I don't want you doing this anymore. Not that it's sinful, but for you, I don't want you to do this anymore. And I want you to give your time here. And I'm calling you to do that. He might not call you to do that. Let's say it's give up TV or Netflix for a month. It would be wrong for me then to come and say, listen, church... I'm going to be cranky the next month. God told me no Netflix, so none of you get to watch it either, right? That, would be, that wouldn't be very loving. That would be me looking out for myself. So, but I might tell you, and you might say, well, that's great, and I'm going to pray for you, Pastor Jay, and I'll watch double the TV to make up for what you're fasting. I don't, I don't know, you know. But if we're going to love one another then, and, and come to unity, we need to know we're, the Spirit of God works in your life different than mine. There are some things that are true. You can say, oh, that's not true for me. No, Jesus is the way, the truth, the light. There is no way to the Father but by Him. Period. That one is not, you know. Uh, but there are some things that are gray, and we go, I don't know. I don't know. What, what should I do here? Should I do this or eat this or go there or do that? And the Spirit of God will work within you and convict you, and we need to be sensitive to that. Why? Because that's loving, and that brings about unity. The devil does not like unity. <laughs> Jesus loves unity. As a matter of fact, look at Jesus' prayer that he prays that you and I actually can answer. It's so a one prayer Jesus prays that, believe it or not, we can be the answer to. He says in verse 20 of John 17, My prayer, it's praying to Father God, is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. So he's saying, I'm praying for my disciples, but also for us. We're right there. We're those who will believe through their message. Jesus is praying for us, and he says what? That all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that, look at this, the world may believe that you have sent me. When we walk in unity, this is powerful today. When we walk in unity, we might disagree on some things, but you know what? For the sake of the cross, we're walking in unity, and we're standing together, bearing with one another, forgiving one another, clothed in Christ. When we do that, look what happens. Verse 21 says that the world begins to believe that, that Jesus was sent for them. I've given them the glory that you gave me. Why? Or how, in what way? That they may be one as we are one. I in them, that's how we're clothed with him, you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. This is the prayer of Jesus, that you and I would walk in unity, not in division. And that we would walk together in love and have patience and bearing with one another, putting up with one another, right? And that we would do that so that the world may know Jesus is the answer. We are living in a world, um, I had a great meeting this week with, with many of you. One meeting was just, uh, you know, kind of stood out for me because we were talking about how, remember that illustration of like, if you have a boiling pot of water and you put the frog in there, he's just going to jump out. But if you have a pot of water, put the frog in and just slowly, slowly, slowly turn that up, that frog's going to boil. Well, we can watch over the last number of years, and I'm talking even the last 30 of years, the way that our world has gone globally and on Christians, and the temperature just keeps getting turned up 
turning up, up. And it's, I mean, it's, it's boiling, folks. We're, we're in a place where persecution is coming or has come to us. And we need to be ready to say, you know what? I don't want to just be boiled here slowly. I need to know who I stand with and where I stand. We do that in unity. We stand together in unity. And what happens is the name of Jesus then is lifted high. You see it in China. You see it in places where they are being persecuted for their faith, that the church grows. I don't know how, the enemy hasn't caught on to that yet. When he brings persecution, the church actually explodes. And so we can be afraid of persecution at the same time. It will challenge you to then make a stand, take your stand and say, this is who I am in Christ. Brothers and sisters will stand with you in unity. And what do we do? We end up answering Jesus' prayer. So we look at these three things and we think, what well, that's powerful, this Thanksgiving, that we can clothe ourselves, we can forgive one another, we can love one another. But remember, our text goes a little bit further, and so I just want to read these last three verses and show you the result of this. When we walk in these things, when we forgive and love one another, the result of it is here in these three verses. Verse 15, the peace of Christ rules in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. Then verse 16, let the message of Christ, it dwells among you richly, where you teach and admonish one another with wisdom, psalms, hymns, songs of the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And then verse 17, and whatever you end up doing, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through Him. When we clothe ourselves in Christ, when we forgive one another and bear with one another, when we walk in love towards one another, the result is seen in these three verses. The first thing that happens is verse 15. The peace of Christ will come into your heart. No matter what's going on in this world around us, and we, let's be honest, we don't know where it's going to go. But I know one thing. His peace is in my heart. He's in control. Uh, my son and I were driving somewhere this week and. Uh, we were talking about this and all that's going on is I know all of you have. We had a big conversation. And I said to him, you know what, bud? But it's not like God's up there going, oh, no, what's happening? And he's panicking and angels are zipping all around heaven going, we didn't see this coming, right? He's in control, folks. He's up there going, yep, yeah, yeah, I saw this. I am the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end. Nothing surprises him. My son says, yeah, when it's our time, it'll be our time. Our life is in his hand. You know what that brings to your heart? Peace. Peace. This kind of peace does something. It rules in your heart. So when you clothe yourself in Christ, when you forgive your brother rather than try and keep it, like I'm going to keep them, they're going to pay. You know who the prisoner is? You're the prisoner. When you forgive, you're set free. And, and when we love them, this is what happens. The peace of Christ begins to flow through our life. We can't explain it. People will say, how are you so peaceful in the midst of this? And you'll say, Jesus, that's my hope. I, I, don't, I, I know I should be panicked, but I'm not because he's in control. That's one of the results of this kind of thanksgiving. And then remember verse 16 says it this way. Then the message of Christ dwells in you. And people ask you what your hope is. You go right there. You say, well, you know what? My church family, my pastor, I'm connected with them. And we believe in a hope that's beyond this world, Jesus. So whether it's COVID or tornadoes or windstorms or a, what are they talking about now? Empty shelves and um, whatever's next. You, you, you come up with it. <laughs> or we'll just watch the news and see what's coming up next. You know, we get together and say, well, we get to let the message of Christ dwell in our hearts. So on the mission field, wherever I am, God may the message of hope. May the message of grace uh, here online to all of you who can share this message. Get it out there. Share it. Link it so that people can know there is a hope in Christ. Let it dwell in you richly. Let it come out of your conversation. You know, one of the things that still actually bothers me is that, you know, when I'm out in the community or, or some of the guys I connect with at hockey or whatever, there's some language that's not church language. You know what I mean? It's not really very churchy. Some of you in the workplace, you know what I mean. And, but the one thing that still bothers me is when my Lord and Savior's name is taken in vain or so flippantly or without thought. The other ones can bother me, but that's one where I think that's the name that makes a difference for this entire world. That's the name that brings peace. That's the message that I'm trying to convey. Let's be people who bring new life to his name. That new, new clarity to what his name really is about in a time where the world 
needs him. And here's the final thing that happens. Verse 17, then every action, when we are clothed with him, when we forgive as he forgives, when we love as he loves, these three things happen, and especially verse 17, that every action then that we take, we're saying, God, may this action be an action you would take. That's, that's what it means when it says for something to be done in the name of Jesus, that we would do it as he would do it. Do you remember those bracelets they used to have, WWJD? What would Jesus do? Yeah, Deb, you've got one. What would Jesus do? And they were around for a while. And it's a great question to ask yourself. What would he do in this situation? And then I want to take a step right into where he would take a step. That's the heart here. That is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving isn't just me with my mouth saying, thank you. But Thanksgiving is me actually letting the peace of Christ, the message of Christ, and the name of Christ be proclaimed through my steps, through whatever I'm doing this week. Listen, you know, now let me get real practical just for a moment. So service is over. We're about to go in a moment. We're going to go out into our week. And, you know, you're going to remember parts of this and wonder what Pastor Jay got his helmet on cutting down trees on a Monday or whatever. All that's going to happen. I don't know where your week's going to go. But I'm going to ask you just to think about these things and pray this little prayer that's going to be wrapped up into verse 17 here. That just what, wherever I step this week, Jesus, help me to be clothed in you, to forgive as you would forgive, and to love as you would love. Just to be clothed in you, forgive, bear with others, and love as you would love. Now, I, it might be a big thing he calls you to. It might be a little thing. Do you know God takes little things and does big things with them? <laughs> a little faith, a little mustard seed, and God can blow the world apart in a good way. So I don't know what God's going to do, but I do know that as you take a step, these things come. And how do I know it? Because these same verses say, and I've highlighted it for you, that we can be thankful. That speaks of the future. We can be thankful. Look at this. And with gratitude in your hearts, do these things with gratitude. Already thanking God for something. Do you know every step you take is ordered by Him? He's already got a plan. He knows where you're going to be this week. He's gone ahead of you. He's prepared that person that He wants you to witness to. He's, got, he's already got that dream He wants to give you, that next step. He's already gone ahead of you. We just It's an easy job in some ways to just go, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right? We just are stepping into it. We do it with thanksgiving. In the whole way, giving thanks to God the Father through Jesus. I pray this morning that maybe it's one of these things that's going to stand out for you. Maybe it's today you're going, I need to be clothed in Jesus. I've been living in anxiety and fear and cancel culture and I need compassion, kindness, mercy. Or maybe it's number two, you're going to say, there's somebody I need to call this week and forgive. Or I need to have a conversation with a good friend and share it with them and forgive them in prayer because I don't, you know, that's maybe going to be enough. Or maybe I just need to be more loving. I don't know where it is God's going to call you to step, but I do know He's going to call you to take a step. Because He's good. He loves you. You stand with me this morning. I want to pray with you before we go. And that God would use each of us. And I want to be clear. I'm not perfect in this, okay? I don't, uh, I don't go through my week and go, I, boy, I got it all gold stars. You know, I got it all little gold stars. And, and Jesus is just so happy with me. There's times that I miss it too. I'm growing and I know you're growing. But let's pray that God will make this week special. That he'll use us in a week that this world needs us to be like him. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we just uh, surrender ourselves afresh to you. We want to be people who are clothed in you, Jesus. With a robe of righteousness, walking as you would want us to walk. We want to bear with one another and forgive one another. Especially in areas where we maybe have held others accountable. We need to forgive them today. And we want to be people who are loving. As we do these things, we know that this world, that priestly prayer that you pray, will see you and know that we are Christians by our love for one another. So I pray for my church family, my brothers and sisters, that every day this week, by your spirit, speak to us. Show us where we can forgive and love and be clothed in your grace. Let us walk with compassion and kindness. And may the name of Jesus be lifted high. We pray it in your mighty name. Amen. amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. I'm praying for you this week. You pray for me. And let's see what God will do in our week. God bless. It was great to see you all this morning. Good to have a full house. Let's give ourselves a round of applause for coming out and being here today. Bless you. Uh, Ross is going to lead you out. But if, if he's not there, just kind of head towards the back and along the back side. Bless you. Thank you so much.